Welcome to this video. My name is Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound and today we're going to talk about a, an emerging uh, a kind of strategic buyout on what we like to call uh, sealed bankroll equity. All right. And uh, how this all works is people will normally collectors and investors. OK, and not everybody uh, does this, but they, they'll go out and uh, they'll begin to pick up some of the more tougher dates of U.S. coinage. Uh, traditionally, anything from the, like the last 40, 50 years. There's very strategic buyouts based on the supply that is currently out there today. So, for example, the amount of, now I'm just going to throw an example out there, the amount of sealed, either bank-wrapped or the U.S. mint-wrapped rolls of 2009 uh, territory quarters, is what I like to call them, you know, that has like Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, the Mariana Islands, things like that. Those are beginning to dry up because there's not only a lot less supply out in the marketplace for those rolls. In addition, they're quite desirable because they are low mintage. All right. But in this particular video, I'm going to talk about a few National Park Quarter rolls, dates, specific rolls that are currently selling on the secondary market today for between $40 and $60. You're never going to believe, believe the list I have for you. Um, we actually have five dates to talk about. And if you are, were one of those folks that actually saved these rolls when they first came out, or perhaps you did take advantage of the U.S. Mint uh, offering on their website for, like, say, a P&D set, I, I'm happy to announce that you have made some money off of these rolls. Now, it's crazy to even comprehend, right? $10 face of rolls that you could currently sell for five to six times face value seems really like a far-fetched idea. But because of the whole bankroll equity type of hoarding that's going on currently, and Believe me, this is something that's picked up here in the, in the last 12 months since the pandemic hit. And I've been closely mon monitoring the uh, the secondary market for these rolls, and they have shot upwards. And the market is just simply dry for some of these rolls, all right? But the rolls that I'm going to talk about today, not only are they low mintage, uh, but there's also some rolls currently online. There's quite a few of them, but I, I don't think it's going to last quite that long. Um, mainly because these are some of the lowest mintage coins out there. As kind of a comparison in this video, you'll hear me uh, talk about the 2009 Jefferson Nichols. As we all know, those are the current kind of like modern key dates of U.S. coins. Uh, the 2009 Philadelphia Jefferson Nickel currently has a mintage of only 39 million. 840,000, whereas the year before that, in 2008, the mintage was 279,840,000. So as you can see, there is a huge steep drop-off. Uh, same with the Denver Mint. The Denver minted 2009 Jefferson Nickel, 46,800,000, whereas the 2008 Denver was only 345,600,000 pieces. I mean, which, which is quite a bit. That's um, uh, almost 10 times the amount of nickels that was produced in 2008 than 2009. But I wanted to throw that out there to get the, those specific numbers ingrained in your brain for when we talk about some of these America the Beautiful or some of you like to just refer them as the National Park Orders and their parallel in the marketplace. Because believe it or not, a number of these have about half the mintage of the Jefferson Nichols. And guess what? What's the current market value of a full roll of either one of those dates of Jefferson's? It's about $100 and going up, all right? So, and again, that is a seriously far-fetched idea that you could take a $2 roll of Jefferson Nichols and flip it for over $100 a roll. So that is kind of like the big... Uh, I, I guess um, the, the bar has been set really high with the 2009 Jefferson Nichols and investors and collectors are looking at alternative dates that are a little bit more accessible, but yet as they're buying it, 
the market is drying up and subsequently the prices have been going up. So it always helps to know what the top targets are in their respective mintages. And I get this question all the time as far as singular coins, but we never in the, in the grand scope of things discuss actual 40 coin rolls, which are $10 face. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and start it off with uh, the first coin here. Um, and you're going to see that all the coins are in one particular year. All right, so th this will make it a little bit easier for you guys to uh, to target. Uh, we have the uh, 2012 P&D. Um, hopefully, I'm going to pronounce this correctly. l u k uh, the Puerto Rican um, uh, National Park Quarter. Go ahead and take, take, take a gander at the mintages for both the P and D. I mean, wow, phenomenal, right? It, it's, it's way less than the 2009 Jefferson Nichols, but the prices haven't quite realized up to that point for those particular coins. Um, that's, this is a good one right here, but if you think this one's pretty good, the next one is just going to blow you away. This is the Chaco Culture, New Mexico ATB quarter. Um, there you go. There's your mintages for both the P and D at 22 million each, respectively. That is a incredibly low number, but is it the lowest number? We're going to find out here pretty soon. Uh, pretty close. Uh, the Denver minted Acadia National Park quarter that you see uh, in, in number form right there, 21,606,000 is indeed the lowest number for any of the America the Beautiful uh, circulation strike issues. Um, and that's going to be a big one here as we go through the video. And uh, the P, the Philadelphias, are 24,800,000. This is a good date right here. And uh, I'll be honest, I go through a lot of quarters. You don't see too many Acadias in great shape these days. Uh, between this one, the Hawaii Volcanoes, and the Chaco culture that we saw beforehand, and you can even throw in the LUK, you just don't see a lot of them in mint state condition out there anymore. All right, so that's kind of a testament as to how tough and how rare these coins are in circulation today. All right, here's the Hawaii Volcanoes. As you can see, this is an incredibly popular design. Uh, the mint, both the Philadelphia and Denver mints, did ramp up production of this coin, uh, not because of popularity and all that stuff, but things were beginning to ease up for supply and uh, all that great stuff. Of course, you know, 2012, there's really nothing notable that, that I, going on in the country at that time other than the, um, the, the country was recovering from the recession a few years earlier. Uh, so I, I really don't know what the rhyme and reason is as to why these particular quarters had dropped down to such a low mintage level. Um, that could be up for speculation. It could be that people were already growing tired of the ATB quarters at that point. But the U.S. Mint really doesn't look at those type of metrics when it comes to producing coins. They look at the general need for these coins in circulation. For example, this is 2021. The U.S. Mint had produced quite a bit of coinage to help combat the so-called coin shortage that we've heard about in the last year. So there are the certain conditions in the market that command a much higher rampage or extra production of coins. So it's anybody's guess how that is caused. I mean, you know, to give you an idea, here's the final uh, ETB quarter of 2012. I mean, look at those mintages. We're up to nine digits all of a sudden. 135 million for the Philadelphia, 166 million for the Denver. I mean, some would say, yeah, I wouldn't even touch this one uh, because the mintages are rather high. But keep in mind, the mintages today on these quarters is somewhere in that 300 to 400 million per design mintage, which is a lot. That's quite a bit. Uh, for 2019 all the way up to 2021, those have been kind of like the uh, consistent numbers for the mintages of those uh, final years of the National Park Quarter Series. All right, so I, I wanted to frame up a few of the key dates of the America the Beautiful Series quarters. You probably won't see mintages of future quarters reach down to a 20 
25 million figure anytime soon. Uh, that remains to be seen. We'll see. But again, we don't know what conditions and, and what metrics and, and what things are in play when the U.S. Mint and its board of directors decide we got to ramp up production or we have to scale back. Okay, there, there's probably a lot more that meets the eye when it comes to that. So let's go ahead and take a look at realized sales because I know that's what you guys were interested in. And uh, here we are on eBay and uh, I just typed in 2012 quarter roll and we went from the highest on downward. Now the first few listings are uh, silver. So th those are the 90% silver 2012 S's. Of course, these really don't play anything uh, in this conversation other than the fact that they're silver and silver is being heavily invested in tr publicly traded today. All right, so we're going to just go ahead and skip to the first kind of like first few relevant listings. Uh, as you guys know, in 2012, that was the first year that the Mint had implemented uh, just kind of like this uh, you know, San Francisco minted business strike coinage uh, dump uh, that was only made available through the U.S. Mint. They sold them in either bags or rolls like you see here. This is going to be kind of like um, the uh, the 1B as far as investability goes for these rolls. Uh, because again, these rolls were not intended for circulation. They were only bought through the U.S. Mint. So here's the first few boxes that you see here. The white boxes are the, um, the U.S. Mint uh, issued stuff. All right, so the first one that we have here is a set of 2012 P and D rolls. Uh, this sold July 11th, and uh, I, I'm willing to bet it's one of each of the uh, national parks for this year. So that's 10 rolls altogether. So this was kind of a bargain. It's almost $20 a roll if you factored in the shipping fee, which is 15 bucks. Uh, so 20 bucks a roll. This one sold for a lot less because it's sold in quantity. Um, you're going to see here right away that the sweet spot for these is either going to be selling them in two roll sets, P and D, uh, or singular, P separately from a D mint roll. And that's where you're going to realize the most amount of potential, the most money. Uh, here you go. Uh, this is a listing right here for uh, Acadia, uh, which is, uh, you know, a, a relatively low mintage date in national park uh as you can see with shipping 118 dollars and 70 cents for only two rolls all right you could just split that puppy right in half and you're going to be right at 59 dollars per roll um here's another one that sold june 24th again you're still over 50 bucks a roll and these are acadias again a very desirable national park for full rolls uh, we have a three-roll lot of the Hawaii Volcanoes. Keep in mind, the vintages have gone up a little bit on this, but you're looking at about $30 a roll for this here. And again, it really all depends on how you sell these, all right? If you uh, pitch them as single rolls, it could, you know, charge a little bit of shipping, you're going to be in a much better position to make more money off of these. Uh, here's the P&D set of Acadia, $80.48. They're kind of all over the place, but the, the going rate for some of these rolls is $40 to $50. Uh, here's another P&D set of Acadias for $82. Uh, with shipping, it's actually $90. And then if we continue on down the line, you're going to see more two-coin sets, L, U, and K. Uh, is still over 80 bucks. So that's $40 a roll. Here's another one here, $40 a roll. Uh, and it continues on down. So you're going to see a lot of two roll sets here. Uh, here's Choco Culture. Of course, this is the lowest minted uh, uh, two coin set that you could buy. Uh, this one with shipping. Shipping's kind of out of sight on that one. Um, that one ended up being $77. So still within kind of like the ballpark range there. Uh, but we're going to get to a point where there's singular roll sales here. So we're coming up to um, right here, starting with the 2012 S. So this is one of those circulated, circulation quality BU, uh, San Francisco minted rolls, LUK. Sold for, uh, with shipping, $63. Uh, as you can see, the money is great right here. Uh, here's a kind of like a hand assembled two, two uncirculated rolls. Again, the hand-assembled stuff isn't nearly as desirable. Uh, people want 
the either U.S. Mint wrapped or the uh, bank wrapped rolls, kind of like the Loomis or the uh, String and Sons. So let's see, here's one right here. This is a bank wrapped roll of uh, Acadius that sold for $60. All right, that's again the most desirable quarter uh, so far. More PD sets, Choco Cultures. Uh, these are from April, by the way, so the market has definitely gone up since then. Uh, again, hand-assembled rolls, not nearly as desirable. Uh, here's a single Choco Culture with shipping. You're at uh, $56 for that. So incredibly solid sales all around. We haven't come across a Denali, and that's understandable because there is uh, eight to nine times the amount of those particular coins. But there's another Choco Culture, $55. Um, here's another Choco. Uh, with shipping, you're at fifty-two seventy-five. Here's another one of those S mints. Uh, that one is Hawaii Volcanoes for fifty-one. So they're not exactly cheap, but it also presents an opportunity for those of you that do possess these rolls to unload them and make four to six x face value for each one of those rolls. And I guarantee you, it is worth it every single time. Uh, to do so. I'm even looking for some specific ones. I'm, I'm looking for a P&D set of Hawaii Volcanoes, for example, uh, that I may just pick up today. Uh, but, it, you know, I, I'm looking to start building a portfolio of some of these more uncommon rolls that have incredibly low vintages. So when you look at the vintages, respective of that 2009 Jefferson Nickel, which keep in mind, a roll is selling for in excess of $100. So it's only going to be a matter of time before we begin to see just an explosion of the values of some of these 2012 quarters. Either you love them or hate them, but at the end of the day, we all love to make money so that way we could afford other high-end coins in our life, maybe more silver, more gold, maybe we want that older uh, U.S. type piece that's graded, you know, things like that. Or you could use money to pay off bills or put food on the table. But there is definitely a lot of opportunity as the market is continuing to blister on. And you could only imagine by the time the fall months hit, these things are just going to get wildly out of control. We might even see $60, $70 rolls as uh, product begins to dry up a good deal on the secondary market. So, that's why I wanted to talk about uh, going back here. Uh, if we went to the next page, are there any other dates to consider? All right. And how do you sell these at the current market value? Well, I kind of touched on the, how to sell them at the current market value today. Uh, any other dates to consider? Sure. Like I had mentioned, all of the uh, San Francisco business strike full rolls in either uh, more than likely they're going to be in the U.S. Mint packaging. Um, from 2012 to the current date are all incredibly attractive targets. These are coins that were produced in such small minimum quantities. As a matter of fact, in 2012, the first year of release of these S-minted uh, uncirculated quarters from the mint, uh, only had mintages of about one and a half million, you know, give or take. And then right now, these are being still sold in 2020 and 2021, but at much reduced mintage, under a million in most cases uh, for some of those dates. So those are fantastic options, the 2012 S's and up. So 13, 14, 15 S's, solid rolls. Do not buy singular coins. Do not hand assemble BU rolls. There's just not enough of a market out there for them. Um, Another date that I particularly find uh, attractive are any of the dates from the first year of the ATB series. They all have relatively small mintages. So from 2010, you have your Hot Springs, Yellowstone, Yosemite, Grand Canyon, Mount Hood. These are currently realizing $40 to $50 rolls currently, and that's for any one of the 2010s. Uh, as a matter of fact, all the mintages for each coin, for both P and D, are in the mid 30 millions. So 35 million, 34 million, 36 million, but there's nothing that's over 36 million. 
all right, which makes these coins, these particular dates, incredibly attractive. If you have them, sell them. You might not get another opportunity to do so. Or you could hold on to them and possibly look at the market, you know, in 12 months or 24 months. Um, it's kind of hard to say. But all I do know is the uh, the market of roll equity is blistering hot. Again, collectors and investors are targeting specific key dates. They're being extremely strate strategic. They're not just buying anything, mind you. They're buying coins uh, with a low mintage and possible future value run-ups uh, because there's so few of them out there. So, you know, those are my current picks of, of dates that are going to be extremely attractive, either as an investment for some of you that want to buy these and just sit on them. Or if you do have some and you just have no need, maybe you've considered sending them back to the bank, hold, hold your roll, hold your phone, <laughs> because... Uh, these are going to shoot up. Oh, another another good set of dates is 2011. I'm not even sure if you guys looked at 2011 ETB quarters, but they're all ridiculously low as well. Some of them a lot lower than 2010. So your Gettysburg, Glacier, Olympic, Vicksburg, and let's see, what's that last one? It's uh, Chickasha. Yeah, it was on the tip of my brain. Uh, yeah, they all have mintages between 30 million and 32 million. So there are a number of, of very attractive dates from 2010 to 2012, in addition to any one of the S-minted uh, business strike roles. Uh, they are going to command a lot of money, and you're going to see these continuously run up as supply dwindles. So that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, hopefully you got a little bit of a takeaway on what uh, bank wrap roll equity stands for in today's market again they're worth so much more money sealed than they are broken apart um, it, it's it's more portable it's easier to sell and that's why people are attracted to those that's going to go ahead and do it for this one ladies and gentlemen i'm your host sean with blue ridge silverhound if you enjoy today's video I would appreciate a like. You can feel free to share this video. And please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell for instant notifications. And uh, come check us out on Facebook. I am back on Facebook under the name Blue Ridge Silverhound Collectibles. Keep in mind, Blue Ridge Silverhound is all one word. But that's it, guys. Have a good one. And I will see you on the next coin video. Coinaholics, we're discovering together.